to another exciting edition of the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. It's game two of the Brainstorm Tournament. Neil, what are the standings? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, I haven't written them down yet, but since we've only had one game, it's pretty easy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Last week, uh, Kells won. It's a surprise. Well, so he got four Water's points. lit. Devo, goes Devo got two, three won. points for coming in second. Andy got one point. No, two points for coming in third. And Allison, you kind of got me off guard with this question, David. Allison got one point for a fourth place finish. <laughs> well, we want. I really people... enjoy the pity point. <laughs> well, Thanks we want to playing. keep people abreast of the tournament standings as we go along. So this could influence betting lines. This could influence, you know, the spread. Like right now, it's two to one for Kells, but you know that could change. Are people playing fantasy brain ladle? I like to think so. Yeah, yeah. Too, yeah. Not yeah, to yeah. think about it. I gotta check into that. <laughs> so today we have a special guest who will be reading the questions, testing our knowledge. You've heard him before. You know him. You love him. Barry. Well, hello, everyone. Greetings. From where, Barry? Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, there, Minnesota. <laughs> yeah we love I Minnesota. I did that just for you guys there. I appreciate you, Barry. <laughs> so, back to you, Neil. What are, the, what are the rules, and what are the rules for the tournament? Handle all the bookkeeping for us. So, every week, we play trivia, and we have a theme, and each week, we've got six categories in that theme. Each category has four questions worth 10 points each, with a few bonus points thrown in here and there. And then a final question, which is worth up to 100 points. And as you mentioned, we're in the beginnings of our tournament, which we're calling the Brainstorm Tournament. Hey, Davo, what's the catch for this game? Well, the catch is every game, every player gets one lightning strike. And they can use their lightning strike to completely obliterate another player's answer. Excellent. I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, that's why I'm the host and you're the most. Today's theme is courtesy of our friend Barry. Nothing more American than Jeopardy, baseball, and apple pie. Speaking of America, we have the 4th of July coming up, and in the interest of this perplexing time in America, I think we need a little Americana trivia to bring us all together. So to celebrate America's 244th birthday, the pursuit of knowledge, we're going to test your prowess on America and Americana trivia. And if nothing else, we'll, we'll entertain you and hopefully educate you. So that, keep the theme in mind. Are you guys ready? My money's yeah. on Andy. Uh, yeah, but I'm ready. I'm, pretty, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> well, we're going to start off with geography, not science, but geography. So Ooh, question, that's why we love you, Barry. Question number one. Route 66 represents the Americana legend. For five points each, Route 66 starts and ends in what American cities? Locked in. Of and I have you a are, five. Andy. Hold on, I have a five-point bonus. Oh, okay. within, oh my within goodness! Within three hundred miles, how long is Route sixty-six? Whoa. Okay. I'm more familiar with Route forty-four from Sonic. You can get a Red Bull slush <laughs> that'll that'll keep you awake for days. And somebody was in nineteen ninety-one. I. Started at Route 66 Origin Point and uh, tried to see how far I could go by taking. You can get these maps where you can find the original pieces of the road, and uh, I drove most of it. Hmm. Huh. Back in the days of maps. Wow. Yeah. I, lo- I remember Map Quest pretty well. <laughs> that was before even Map Quest. It's what all about this? life experiences. 
It really <laughs> is. You start, so it started in, I think it started here. Did it start here? It's going to be someplace tiny and stupid. <laughs> wow. He's already condemning Americana legends. <laughs> so is anybody locked in other than Andy? I am. Um, sure, I'll, I'll lock in. He uh, says confidently. Uh, I'm going to lock in with my horrific answers. Okay. Everybody locked in. We'll let, uh, well, we know we can't have Allison go first, so let's try Kells. You want to give us a shot? I uh, say Chicago to L.A. Okay. <laughs> and how long? I didn't even go for it. <laughs> Dave-o. I said Chicago to L.A. Okay. All right. And I said I did guess. I said uh, it's it's way too short, but I just wrote down a thousand miles to kind of get within the buffer zone. Okay. <laughs> And Alice makes, makes the United States about 1,500 miles long. Well, How about you I shut said, up a little bit, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> I said Tulsa because shout out to T-Town uh, to L.A. And I said 1,600 miles. So, Andy, <laughs> don't give me grief. <laughs> so, Andy... Why don't you tell us about Route 66? It does go through Tulsa. <laughs> so she's right about that. In fact, that's the first time I was in Tulsa, is following Route 66 in 91. It's Chicago to L.A. And what? Uh, um, <laughs> no. I believe, I don't know the exact, but I'm going to guess it's got to be right around 2,500 miles. All right. Well, the correct answer is Chicago to actually Santa Monica but we will give you points for L.A. And are you ready for this? It is 2,448 Andy. miles long. Good Andy. Lord. So close. Yes. You, had, you just had to be within 300. You got it, Andy. <laughs> he Can wanted to get it fun, exactly right, though. Can I tell a fun uh, Americana story about my Route 66 trip? Um, I did all this research in advance, and um, I knew I wasn't going to make it all the way to L.A. I made it um, a little bit west of El Reno, Oklahoma, before my money started running out and, and I had to go home. Um, and the last hotel I stayed in, I had heard it was this hotel. They had shot the, uh, a scene from Rain Man uh, at this hotel. And you could actually request the room. And oh, wow. it apparently was like unchanged since they were there. And it was like the seediest hotel. And I walk in <laughs> and it's just like in the movies, there was an extraordinarily fat guy in a muscle white t-shirt <laughs> that was stained, swear to God, with a fly swatter. And I asked for a room and I said, can I get the Rain Man room? And he goes, you have a reservation? And I said, no. And he spun around and looked at a calendar on the wall that I kid you not was blank, looked at it for a minute, turned back around at me and said, it'll be an extra $5. And I think the whole room was like $35. So it was really obscenely cheap. Um, and I got there at night. The next morning I woke up and I walk out. I have a picture of the summer in my collection. The only other vehicle in the parking lot was an El Camino with four flat tires. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's head to question number two on that route. What state capital has the highest elevation in the U.S.? What state capital has the highest elevation? And I have an easy mode for five points. And that just feels like a trap. This feels it, like a trap. Feel like a trap. It's a trap. I'm I'm locked. Uh, I'm locked in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna lock in too. Why am I getting baited into taking I'm the lock, easy I'm mode? Lock, I'm locking in. Okay, I'm I'm locked in, but now. I, Barry, can we hear the easy mode before you say the question? 
Certainly. Or the answer? Certainly. It is the oldest city in the United States to become a state capital. It was founded in 1610 by Native Well, Americans. bang. Well, bummer. Native American. Oh, yeah. No, I'm pretty sure I don't know what this is. Yeah. Should have taken yeah. the easy mode, but then I still wouldn't have gotten it. Exactly. So. All right. So let's start off with Davo this time. What say you, Davo? Well, you know, I, I'm from Colorado. Of course. <laughs> You're from there Colorado? I'm from Colorado. <laughs> and the capital of Colorado is Denver, which is a mile high. So I went with Denver. All right. Allison. Same Z's. Are you from right. Colorado? My mother was born in Aurora. I lived in Aurora. It is a horrible place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, uh, Kels, what say you? I've never been to Colorado, but I said Denver as well. And Andy? I went with Denver, Colorado, because I also have family living in Colorado and, and friends of the show. Shout out to Natalia and Justin. When and how you sweep is a vital part of curling. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. So uh, can, I, can I guess? I actually had a parenthetical. I, yes. That I, uh, I, I was thinking Montpelier. Okay. Well, you were thinking wrong, but that's okay. okay. That's, just, that's all right. That's all and right. And just remember, this is not only to entertain people, but it's also to educate people, because mm -hmm. the correct answer is at seven thousand one hundred and ninety-nine feet above sea level, Santa Fe, New Mexico, is the highest wow. elevation state okay. capital. So there we go. That's a so great trivia question. So they're high for more than just one reason, right? There you go. <laughs> question number three. What is the largest state, size-wise, east of the Mississippi River? And I have an easy mode, an ultra-easy mode, for two points. I'm locked oh, wow. in. So by size-wise, you mean area? Area, correct. Largest state, size-wise. Hmm. East of the Mississippi. Anybody else between two? Yeah. Just me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can't afford to not do this. I need to go easy mode, and maybe even ultra easy mode. There's only one ultra easy mode, so. Okay. <laughs> but but I'll wait till everyone's locked in. I locked in if you're waiting on me. Uh, I'm gonna go easy mode as well. I would like to get on the board. I'm going to lock in. Okay. The and Dave, you're already on the board. Ultra easy mode uh, uh, is it is not Russia. Oh, see, this is a trick question. What? Um, What's uh, happening? Because it's, east and I'm west. Lost. it's both east and west of the Mississippi. You can't say it's one or the other. I, oh, I'm, I'm locked in. What? Wait, what's happening? Why, um, what, yeah, why am um, I so dumb it's a right trick now? Question. It is not Russia. It's not a trick question. It's a trick it's, clue. It's a trick clue. Yes. <laughs> so I took easy mode for nothing? <laughs> Apparently so. Pits. You can do this. No, no, no. You, no, you, you got, got it. This. You got this, Allison. I'm between. No, I really don't, though, gang. Why do you pep talk me <laughs> into a wall? Because we're trying to get you to run through that wall to the right answer. You can do it. What does the Kool Aid Man say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My parents' house. Okay. Well, I'm locked in. Uh, I have. Hmm. Do we, do we want to start with Allison? Just to... No, dear God, no. <laughs> All right, Andy, Andy, why don't you tell us? I locked in with Pennsylvania, but from your answer, you're All talking right. about Alaska. Or by your easy clue, you're talking about Alaska. All Isn't right. that west? That, 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 that would be west. Yeah. Kels. I threw Florida out there. Okay. Okay, God. Wow. Okay. Devo. I also said Florida. All right. And Allison. 
Okay, I was between two. I was between Florida, and I don't know why I thought Maine was sneaky big, but I said Florida. All right, sweep the lick. Oh my God, wow. no! Wow, we are educating people tonight. The correct answer, and the clue, it is not Russia, was Georgia. Oh! Uh, uh. Really? I didn't know Georgia was that big. Is it, it a is it a Mercator map problem, or why does it not look that big? <laughs> Eat that guy. <laughs> Screw Mercator. You know, Barry, I apologize. I had just read recently that Alaska is considered to be both in the east and the west. Well, why? Because it crosses, <laughs> it crosses the international date line. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what I thought you were saying is conceivably you could argue Alaska is east of the Mississippi as well as west oh. of the Mississippi. That, I thought it that would have been a trick question. Let's get you all on the board here. All right. No, man, don't, do, don't do that. Don't say that. All right. <laughs> I hope the question is where are you sitting right now? <laughs> I well, guarantee you're you, close. You, you'll all get some points on this next question. Oh my yes. Why are you going to do me like that, Neil? I guarantee you. <laughs> if you don't, we got a problem. All right. We have all heard of Six Flags Amusement Park, and that mm -hmm. Six Flags have flown over Texas. For two points each, for each flag represented, name the Six Flags that have flown over Texas. Okay. I know one because I've been to it. Well, Alice, you have two. When Neil laughs, it makes me laugh. I just wonder which one she's been to. I got five. I four. I got six. Of course you do. Of course you do, teacher. Americana. <laughs> you teacher. Teacher, you. You educator of young minds. Yeah. Well, when you put it like um, that, it's really scary, dude. It really I know. Is. <laughs> I, I'm still startled they allow me into a classroom. I feel like I'm missing an obvious one. I got five. I've got five. I'm miss I I don't know which one I'm missing. I gotta think a minute. Uh, no, I have to get more than three. Teacher of the year, everybody. <laughs> wow. I ain't got time for amusement so parks. Disrespectful. <laughs> So disrespectful. Remember, uh, if you're going to use your lightning strike, you've got to do it before answers are read. Yes. Oh, okay. I should have pulled that out right out the gate. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> yeah, when, when Andy was talking about his Route 66 road trip and his convertible oh, okay. hitchhiker trailing and saying, Go in my way. Escort. That's the, I mean, the wind in your hair through your Ford Escort. <laughs> Ford Escort. Drop top I did not Ford believe Escort. it had air conditioning. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Cassette de tape deck in it. Yeah. Alright, I'm locking in with five. Yeah, I got five. Okay, I'm throwing some weird ones in here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't like pregnancy brain fart. You said, like, Texas cities, right? <laughs> <laughs> The, the the six flags over Texas. Yeah, like what, each one correlates to flags? a city. Yes. No, no, no it does no. not. Oh no. my god. A country that has, to, that to, has to a nation. Texas. Yes. Yeah. To a nation. Holy a nation God. Well, with. I have none. You get lost. That's you why Neil laughed. Surely you could just, just one, Yeah, just really one. You got you, Just keep. Just you got it. You can take. You probably got two if you got that one. If you got that, if you got one, you got two. Easy. Okay, I, I think I have right. three again, real fast. There you go. There yes. you go. Hey, but just so you, you guys know, there's a Six Flags in San Antonio, so. <laughs> <laughs> Forever out that way. <laughs> I think San Antonio had the same Six Flags. Yes. <laughs> okay. Change. Okay. Houston, right. Houston uh, probably did too. So, uh, are you like uh, Allison? Uh, I got four now. Should I try more? They're probably all garbage. <laughs> mm. 
I, okay, I'm gonna give up now because it's gonna get worse. So, I'm so glad I asked. <laughs> does does that not asking too. Allison to start the clause still in effect in a tournament? You no. may ask whoever you want to ask. Yep. The, yeah, the, 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 we've decided it's not really in my contract. All I right, just wish Allison, it was. Why don't okay. you enlighten us? I put the United States, Mexico, Spain, and oh. France. Bollocks. <laughs> Dave Oh, I put uh, the United States, the Confederacy, mm -hmm. uh, Mexico, France, and the Texas flag because they were a nation. All right. Ooh. And how about Andy? Uh, Spain, Mexico, France, Republic of Texas, U.S., Confederate States of the Union. And Kels? Uh, Spain, Mexico, the U.S., France, and Texas. Uh, the correct answer is those five and the one you missed, Kels, was the Confederate States of America. Yeah. So, Dave, uh, uh, gross. Andy, I'm going to give you credit for Confederate States of the Union because I think you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you did that. Wait, wait Sorry a minute. He's an AP history, American history teacher, and he made that a kind of mistake. Yeah. A -push. That could keep a kid yeah. out of college. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Neil, I assume you're keeping score there for us. Oh, did you want me to keep score? <laughs> I'll keep the score. So just just for my records, I got uh, Kells, Davo, and Allison all with ten on that one, and Andy with twelve. Correct. Sounds about right. Oh, I don't think I got ten. I thought you got ten. Did you get eight? I take I it, but I only got eight. She got eight. Okay. But you'll give me ten for honesty, right? Uh, well, technically, <laughs> I'm going to take away two for honesty. But... <laughs> oh, dang it. All right, at the end of round one, Andy has 27, Kels and Davo are tied at 20, and Allison has eight. Well, here we go. Let's go on to entertainment. All right, question number one. In January 1933, Jerry Siegel published a short story in a self-published magazine with his friend Joe Schuster, providing the illustrations. The titular character was a bald vagrant named Bill Dunn who was tricked by an evil scientist into consuming an experimental drug. But based on that short story, the character reappeared with the given name of Kal Al, K-A-L-E-L, at birth, when he first appeared in present form in 1938. Name this character. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. What? What? Okay. You know what? Screw it. I gotta guess. Got it. You locked in? Yeah. Well, am I the only one not? No, that's yep. correct. You're the only one not. <sighs> yep. Locked in. All right. Let's start with Kels. Superman. And Davo. Superman. And Andy. Bow down before me, son of Carell. Superman. And Allison. Ooh. Son of Carell. I stand like by my answer. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> I believe you said the per I believe you said the person was bald, and his name was Kale Ale, which is a lot like Spanish. So I went with Popeye. <laughs> I love that logic so much. Oh, it is sound it logic. It is sound it logic. Is. It is sound logic. It's incorrect, but it is sound logic. <laughs> sound logic. <laughs> The correct answer was Superman. And 1938. Andy, Andy hmm. what was his father's name again? Oh, is it Cal L? Cal L? No. Cal L the Superman. Now bow down before me, son of Jarrell. There you go. There. So Sorry. Yeah, you, you just had to get that right. All right. Well, question number two in the entertainment category Disneyland, part of Americana lore. In hmm. what year? Did Disneyland, that's in California, by the way, open, becoming the first theme park? One point off for each year that you're off. In what year did it first open? Locked in. Huh. 
Okay, I'm locked in. I think uh, tonight I'm just going to go with the first thought and I just stick with it. In less I'm talking in. cities. <laughs> Unless I think the answer is in the wrong ballpark. I'm locked in. I'm locked in as well. I got a solid guess. Let's go with Allison. I said 1937. All right. Let's try Andy. 1955. Kels. Awesome. 55, the year Marty McFly went back. And Davo. I went with 65. Well, the correct answer is it opened on July 17th, 1955. Toots. Toots. Good job, guys. So, 1955. Go I heard, way back. I heard a trivia nugget about Disney this, uh, this, this, this afternoon. They are redoing the, um, the log ride. The, uh, what's it called? Oh, Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain. Um, and they're going to they're gonna make it uh, Princess and the Frog themed. <gasps> hmm. I love that. My son loves that movie. It's a good one. My, uh, Ian really likes the part where the hunters are in the boat and they're bonking each other trying to smash the frog. <laughs> Loves that part. It's a good one. <laughs> Making fun of Cajuns. <laughs> Question number three. This American Patriotic Songs music was composed by a church organist in 1883. Lyrics were by Catherine Lee Bates in 1895 but it hit the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1972 and has appeared there numerous times since then, around the 4th of July, peaking last year at number four, and it is sung by a Music Hall of Fame singer. Name this famous patriotic song. Oh, uh, boy. Can I, can I sing the song for points? Because <laughs> I'm not going to come up with the title. Oh, wait, I better um, not hum yet. <laughs> I'm locked in. <laughs> All right, I'm locked in with my guess. If this is right, then there's. It's got to be. Uh, I don't know why really I'm thinking about like it. I'm locked in. Versions of this song that I like. One okay, version. everybody else is locked in. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is the song that is happening in. Sandlot. <laughs> and it's amazing. And there's I love fireworks. What are you talking about? Yeah, I love it. Okay. That's the version I like. Is that your answer? A song that was played in the Sandlot? <laughs> I don't know about that title, but uh, all right. So let's start with Kelts. Uh, she's describing America the Beautiful. All right. And how about Andy? Uh, America the Beautiful, sung by Ray Charles. Okay. And Devo. Uh, America the Beautiful. And Allison, you said America the Beautiful. That is I correct. I did. That Woo! is correct. And if you've never heard that song, anyone, go and check out Ray Charles' America the Beautiful. Speaking of movies, Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz represent the golden age of American movies. In what year did both of them hit the silver screen for the first time? Locked in. Locked in. It was Gone with the Wind and, Wizard, and of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Oh, this is one of those that I'm going to have to get exactly right because everybody else is going to get it exactly right. <laughs> and no. you have to get it right. I mean, that's not actually the reason you need to get it exactly right. Oh. The reason is because it's a <laughs> trivia game. Dang. Dang. Wow, that's, that's how that that's cold. <laughs> well, I lost my pen, so I'm going to mentally write the wrong answer down. I like how Neil is just here to, 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 to badger people at this point. He's not, he's not doing questions. He's just, I want to make he's sure people still feel bad. He's the opposite of a hype man. I mean, it's to, like we gotta... <laughs> to be fair, I kind of do that even when I am doing the questions, too, don't I? That's true. Mm -hmm. It's like we got a substitute teacher, but the teacher is in the classroom judging us. <laughs> <laughs> like right. The teacher didn't take the day off. <laughs> Has the 
Was everybody locked in the wrong answer? I mean, the right answer? I, I locked well, I in the right the answer, one. sir. I feel right, pretty good about this. Devil. Oh, dang it. Why <laughs> did I not use my lightning bolt? Yeah, Dave that was the chance. You, you, you can use it after everybody locks in and before answers are given. Yes, oh, no I, would, given. I would. 1939. Truly... 1939. Not you, Devo. I was going to do Andy. Thanks, Devo. <laughs> I just wow. had to. I had to get it out there. You said it felt like a threat. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. 1939. And oh my Kels. god. 1939. And Allison. Okay, now I really wish you would have gone to me first. Okay. I need to. I need to change up my philosophy because I actually wrote down 1939. Yeah. Ooh. There you go. Well. We got a we got a clean one there, uh, Neil. Why don't you tell us what the score is after round number two? Andy has sixty-seven, Kel sixty, Dave fifty, and Allison twenty-eight. Bringing up the rear. Yes. All right, next category is African American firsts. So, based on your great show a couple of weeks ago, this should be right in there for everybody to educate them as well. Who? was the first African-American Supreme Court justice. And I do have an easy mark locked in. for five I think points. I know it. Locked I'm locked in. Locked in. All right, Allison. Yep, knew that was coming. Um, <laughs> now I'm very nervous. Go to someone else, Barry. I'll still say my stupid answer, but I just might feel better about it if it's... <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll go to the other history teacher. Andy. Oh, no, 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 no. No, she doesn't get to do that. <laughs> I am on, not Andy. allowing that. No. <laughs> I don't even totally know if this person's black now. Now I just feel... Now we want you to go first, for sure. I thought you were okay. going to say, I don't okay. even know if this person was a Supreme Court justice, which I could kind of understand. <laughs> yeah, that one is different worse. way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure he's a man now they think about it. <laughs> I wrote down Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Now that looks silly. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. I said Thurgood Marshall. All right. Andy. Thurgood Marshall. Very good. And and Kels? Thurgood Marshall. And Davo. Thurgood Marshall. And that is the correct answer. Very good. 1967, by the way. And he was the, I believe, the lead attorney for Brown versus the Board of Education. Oh. That's correct. He was the NAACP's lead attorney on that case. Mm -hmm. oh, all right. So the easy mode that I didn't uh, have to read is it was not Clarence Thomas. So that being said. Mm. Question number two. This American singer and actress frequently performed jazz, swing, and pop music on the Broadway stage and in concerts. She began her career in the 1920s singing the blues. Her most notable recordings were Diana and Stormy Weather. She was the second African American to be nominated for an Academy Award. She was also the first African American star to have her own television show, not series, but show, with a 15-minute variety special in 1939. She was oh the first African American woman to be nominated for a primetime Emmy name this accomplished woman um, um I, th 1920s. I, I think i'm locked in yeah let's go with it gut instinct night right. am i gonna take the allison gambit and go with the first thing that popped in my head because Halle yep. berry would be dumb <laughs> extremely don't do that I think I got a better chance with uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But, Ruth uh, Bader forward. Ginsburg. <laughs> the notorious RGB. RG. RBG, sorry. R I don't know what Notorious saying. RBG. Did, you, did right. you say nominated for an Academy Award, too? I believe I did. Yes, I did. She was the second nominated for an Academy Award. I'm locked in. Fiddlesticks. <laughs> Fiddlesticks. Really? Y'all aren't locked in? Now, it could just be because I oh saw a very God. interesting drunk history about this. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Those are funny. Those are funny. I'm going gonna, gonna to lock in. I'm locked in. No, I'm locked locked in. in. All right. Let's start Kels. 
It was very interesting that uh, Devo threw out uh, Halle Berry because I believe she played her in a movie. And if I'm right, it's Dorothy Dandridge. Oh, oh no. And, That's what I was and let's try Devo. Um, uh, can you go to Allison, please? <laughs> yeah, I bet I bet Devo and I put the same thing. Yeah. Okay, so, so the answer is no. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to buck up, bud. <laughs> That's a lesson I had to learn. All right, so what I put, I was thinking Dorothy Dandridge, but I didn't know she was a singer, and I know this other lady was a singer, and she's really cool, so I went with Lena Horne. Got it. No, okay. we did not put the same thing. And oh. I also put down Lena Horn. Okay. And Allison. I said Ella Fitzgerald. Ooh. When and how you sweep is a vital thing <sighs> to come. Come on. Oh. So remember about the education part here. It is Ethel Waters. Oh. Ethel Waters. I would not have gotten that. In the Never years. Years. It's a good one. Well, now you know. If you ever go to the bar and they ask that question, you're going to get it. Remember, this is a tournament, so some of these questions are going to be a little bit harder, but we're going to educate you. So question number three, who was the first African-American African heavyweight boxing champion? And I have an easy mode for five points. What was his name? Locked in. I, I, I think I am too. I can probably see the clouds coming. Yeah, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Got it. Everybody locked in. Let's start with Andy. Jack Johnson. Okay. Dave. Oh, damn I said it. Jack Johnson as well. Kels. I'm surprised I didn't get struck. Uh, Jack Johnson. And Allison. You know, I watched a whole documentary on Jack Johnson, and then I wrote down Joe Lewis like an idiot. <laughs> <I'm a bomber. laughs> Come on. We're not judging. However, the easy mode, he was called the Galveston Giant, and he was a boxing champion from 1908 to 1915, and his 1910 fight was called the fight of the century. And according to Ken Burns, he said for more than 13 years, John Arthur Johnson was the most famous African-American on earth. Jack Johnson. Good job. You know what would have been a really good easy mode, Barry? Yes. You could say he likes to make banana pancakes. Yeah, I was going to make the same joke. You beat me to it. <laughs> okay. So question number four. The first African, African American invited to dine at the White House did so as a guest of Theodore Roosevelt. Deborah Davis in her 2012 book highlights the White House dinner that shocked the nation. Who was this guest of honor? The, uh, That's a great like question. Jack Johnson and try to kick his ass and <laughs> I think I'd have put my money on Johnson on that one. Me yeah, too. Probably. <sighs> Not in the first round, though. Teddy, Teddy was pretty tough. And then well, Johnson probably was. would have walked off with uh, with Teddy's wife too. <laughs> yeah. I think I think Teddy actually lost an eye in a boxing match. He did when in the, in the White House, the uh, uh, Navy fighter was like the champion fighter for the U.S. Navy was brought to the White House to meet the president. And, of course, Teddy Roosevelt uh, suggested they box to see how good he was. And he also said, bully. <laughs> bully. <laughs> that just isn't said enough, in my opinion. I'm locked in with crap. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't even. all the time with high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, why not? Um, I'm locked in. I can't get anything in the right time frame. I was really hoping you were going to go with Lincoln. Me too. And then I would have had a better guess. <laughs> Me yeah. too. That's exactly. I, I think we're on the same page. Yeah. So no I way. think I just took that guess off. and applied it to Teddy Roosevelt. So. Yeah, I think and that's what I'm going to have to write down or punt. Andy, are you locked in? Oh, yeah. Everybody else locked in? Um, I think just because I want to hear Neil play the sound effect, I think I'm going to punt. And, just like I did last game, I would also like to lightning bolt Andy. There you go. There it is. Well, 
Wait, we uh, got one more sound effect, right? Or it's when I come up. Yeah. Got it. Got it. All right. Let's start with Kels. I was on the fence between um, George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington, and I just went with Booker T. Washington. And five Dave times, Five times. Five times. Five times. Five times. <laughs> Dave uh, I, 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 could, I went with Frederick Douglass because I'm a Nimrod. <laughs> At a ripe old age. Of 204. (laughs) Still spry. Andy. It's Booker T. Washington, not that it matters. And Allison. (laughs) Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Kick is away. There's a high, twisting, hang time spiral. That's so good. That is good. That is good. And the correct answer is Booker T. Washington. Right. Not to be confused with Booker T and the MGs. That's a musical group. <laughs> yeah, Andy would, Andy would have liked that, except he's moping in the corner. I'm not moping. <laughs> Actually, it was it was one of the very first successful rock groups that had both black and white artists in it, so it kind of works that, the African-American category. Absolutely does. I don't think that's why he thought you were moping, Andy. No, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, bring us up to speed on that score. At the end of round three, Kells has 90, Andy 87, Devo 70, and Allison 38. Yeah, there's still uh, still a chance, Allison. Somebody's <laughs> got to get last. So you that's saying that's true. Chance. Well, let's Stand let's go chance. to the history teachers here, and we're going to oh. test your knowledge on Americana history. Oh come on! Right. Question Barry. question number one. Margaret Gorman was the first. In 1921, the first what? Margaret Gorman was the first in 1921. The first what? Oh, boy. I could take a guess. I don't know. I got nothing. The first of one of many of Teddy Roosevelt's conquests? Um, (laughs) Um... No idea here. Teddy was dead by 21, so yeah, that's true. Not the ghost of Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> bully, bully. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, okay. First. 1920s. 1920s. Roaring 20s. That doesn't really make sense. I guess. I'm oh. taking a weird boat. Dang it! <laughs> I think a weird guess. Oh my god. <laughs> are you, I are need you to doing quit. okay, Allison? Are you doing no, okay? No, guys. I'm so pregnant and I'm so <laughs> tired. I'm crawling my way through this game. I'm pregnant. So, who is locked in? I am. I am. I am. Uh, I'm not. Um. Uh, uh, sebe, sebe. I'm just gonna punt. <laughs> what were those words? Sebe, sebe, sebe. The James let's, Brown School of Speech. Let's start with Andy. I I have no idea. I've never heard of her. Uh, first, a jitterbug. <laughs> oh, trying to come up with something for the 20s. Davo. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Kick is away. There's a high, twisting, hang time spiral. Kels, we have faith in you. What you have? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. What I said, first woman to cast a vote. Okay. I was thinking that. Allison. Oh, that's not a bad guess. Oh, Oh, so I don't God. Know, with, a, with a secret ballot, you wouldn't know. Oh. Yeah, so I, thought, I thought that that's what you were going to say. No, because you it said was, vote. but I got mixed up with the last category. And I, <laughs> oh, God. It was not okay, Texas. I'm gonna she say, was not the first person in Texas. I'm going to say what I wrote down, but for the love of God, if I am right, but my pregnant brain messed this up for me. Okay. I said, yes. I was like, okay, that would make sense. Female voter. 
but I thought maybe she was specifically the first black female voter because I was stuck in the African American category that we just left. <laughs> and I hate well, myself. You know, to cover all your bases. Thank God it wasn't that. right. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. Well, what was the category? And polling stations opening all across the nation at the same time. You can't possibly know who was the first woman to vote. That's I don't right. Think. But what is the oh. theme of the show? Americana. And America. She was yeah. the first Miss America. Oh, that's oh. a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Nice. All right. Well, let's uh, let's uh, try a little bit easier one here. Hopefully, <laughs> number two. Question number two. In 2017, this American was named the most admi- on the most admired list for a record 61st time and the top 10 every year for 61 years. Who was this distinguished American? Were there years in that? 2017, he was named to the 61st time. Carry the one. That's what, I, my, <laughs> that's what I'm doing too. <laughs> I'm still admired for 61 years. And there is right. an easy mode. I'm going to take it. Yeah, I'm going to take the easy mode. Okay. Uh, I'm behind. I'm going to take the easy mode. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to take the easy mode. Right? I'm That's right what now. I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm, let's just. I'm walking in. All right. Allison, are you locked in? or? No, I better take the easy mode. My math doesn't make sense. So we got three easy modes here. He Mm -hmm. died on February 21st, 2018 at the age of 99. Thank God I did not go with the, or did not go with my original. Allison, why are you doing me like that? At the age of 99. (laughs) Why are you doing me like that? (sighs) 99. Just couldn't hold out a little while longer to get the three digits. Man. Nope. <laughs> Loser. Could it, be, could it be Abe Vagoda? When did Abe Vagoda? Is Abe Vagoda still alive? <laughs> he's still old. Hey, he's still. If Fab Five Freddy's still alive, Abe Vagoda's still alive. <laughs> Stop it. One of You've them is warned. a billion years old. I like Abe Vagoda. <laughs> you only like him because he was on Godfather. Oh, he died and in good 2016. Burger. And Good Burger. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> and Barney Miller. He, he died in 2016, uh, two days after Fab Five Freddy. He t- okay, that's that's your last one. You're done. This is what? A leave fast. This is officially. <laughs> leave him alone. We're officially putting you on. <laughs> reprimanding you. Hey, I'm not show you to talk to HR. Okay, first of I'm all, not, I'd like to I, say, did you start this question off, Barry, with "Let's get everybody some points"? Yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> kind of did. I. Oh God. <laughs> you know, Barry. That's false advertising. Killing me. Sorry about that. So also, they didn't pick him the year that that he died. That seems kind of brutal. Died too early in the year. Oh. Mm. You can still admire a guy when he's dead. Come on, yeah. good. Many people. I've do. liked Fab Five Freddy for years. Okay, that's oh, it. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> it's a line step. Habitual. Uh, habitual line step on. I'm He's a habitual line step. <laughs> 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 habitual line step. The only reason There's I'm no way I'm going to get this. I just need to write something so stupid down. Catastrophically bad. That mm-hmm. I have to cover it in frosting hey. to make it go down the throat. <laughs> you know, it's just so bad. Davo, can I guess what you wrote down? Yeah, sure. Everybody Did you write down me? FDR? No. I'm going to point. Okay. It. All right. All I'm right. Everybody point. locked in? Um, 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 I think this person's still alive. <laughs> and not 102? <laughs> That's never stopped us before. <laughs> okay. All right. Davo, you are the first to lock in without going to the easy mode. Yeah. 
What do you say? I said Martin Luther King Jr. Okay. He's an admired he American. He's living in a trailer park in Tulsa. <laughs> Who survived. knew? <laughs> yeah, it was a horrible answer, but he's an admired American who should be on that list every year. So that's my rationale. That's fair. Okay. Uh, Kels. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. <laughs> Kick is away. There's a high, twisting, hang time spiral. And Andy. You know, the math doesn't make sense, but I, I was watching an old concert last night and was reminded once again how Paul McCartney really was just ripping off Little Richard early in his career. So I what? should be Little Richard. But Little Richard died Richard? in the last six months, so. What? <laughs> and he <laughs> wasn't 99. He should have been. He should have been. Little Richard. He didn't get enough props when he died. <laughs> Allison. Did you come um, up with the correct answer? Well, <laughs> most definitely not. I just tried to think of who died in 2018. And I remember Mac Miller tragically died. That's not who I put. Everyone settle down. Good, uh, but good. somebody who was super old that died in tw 2018 was Stan Lee. So. Oh, for me, I thought you were going to say Gallagher. <laughs> Well, the correct answer, 61 years in a row, was Billy Graham. The Reverend Billy Graham. Oh. oh. I would not have guessed that in a million years. Never. Well, uh, I actually did some work with his organization, and he was an incredible, incredible guy. And the really? integrity that he had in the whole organization is just amazing. Um, so, and okay, little trivia nugget. He was at one time the only person in America, okay, and real person because Santa Claus is not real, but he was the only person to have his own zip code because oh. he would always say to, to his audience, just write me, Billy Graham, Minneapolis, Minnesota. That's all you need. And literally, he would get all the mail. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> right. so now you know. I do. I That's do. really cool. Question number three. I know you're going to get this. I nope. just know it. National <laughs> now parks, I'm psyching myself out. National parks are a hallmark of America's conservation and America's beauty. What was the first U.S. national park? And I have yeah, We don't the easy like to go mode. outside. I really don't like going outside. But I'm locked yeah, in. There are locked in. Yeah, I locked in. It's a trap. This is like Denver locked all over in. again. <laughs> You guys are going to be so smart after this, though. And you're <laughs> locked in? Order. Yes. All right, everybody's locked in? All right, let's start off with Allison. Oh, dear. I said Yellowstone. All right, and Andy? I think it's Yellowstone as well. Well, let's see what Kels says. I was going with Yellowstone. And Davo? I said Yosemite. <laughs> well... The easy mode question was a bill created it was signed into law in 1872 by Ulysses S. Grant. And the correct answer is Yellowstone. Uh, and if wow. you've never watched the National Park series by Ken Burns, it is outstanding. You really, really, really yeah, you really ought to watch it. It's fabulous. Okay. Um, I've seen it twice. Yeah, it's, it's quite, quite good. All right. And question number four. Who, and there's an easy mode for this. Who was the first American to win a Nobel Prize? Who was the first American to win a Nobel Prize? And there is an easy mode. I want easy mode because I have no points. Um, I'm going to take the easy mode too because it can't be who I think it is. Oh, I do know who this is. Give me a second. Who is, I, I know... What's his name? What's his name? It's... I'm going to take easy mode. Give me a minute. I'm thinking. Everybody we can note, hear you. Note. Nobody <laughs> talks. Where are the gears? Nobody talks. Nobody speaks. Where's, it? Where's Eric Clapton from? Britain. Is he? He's British. Yeah, he's British. 
Did Eric Clapton get a Nobel Prize? I don't know. I'm trying to help anybody. For shredding. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's known for is his shredding. Yeah. That's why they call him Slow Hand. Yeah. <laughs> Great album, by the way. Didn't he do? Um, I almost. This is gonna be phrased very, very poorly. I was about to say, didn't he do cocaine? But like the song "Cocaine." Yeah, he did. <laughs> the answer is he did both. Yeah, I, I figured. And lots, copious amounts. If yes. you wanna get her, birdie, birdie, <laughs> bye, cocaine. Cocaine. I, I think that was Leon Redbone that you're impersonating, but. <laughs> All right, and maybe he's pissed. So he locked in with no boat, with no easy mode. But we'll go to the easy mode then. It was a Nobel Peace Prize, and it was awarded in the 20th century. <laughs> er. Okay. I'm I'm locked in. Er. Uh, I'm locked in. This, er. I, I still don't feel good about this, but I feel awful about this. That's all I got. Cocaine. Okay. Everybody locked in? <laughs> I, I don't know. Allison, did you lock in? <laughs> Dave, why don't you tell us who the cocaine addict was that uh, won the first Nobel Prize? Woodrow Wilson. Wilson. <laughs> Woodrow Wilson. Kels. I said Martin Luther King. All right. Andy. I think it's Teddy Roosevelt. And Allison. God bless America. Well, because you asked a national park question. I couldn't get out of that, so I wrote down Ted. Big old nice. Ted Roosevelt. It is. Theodore Roosevelt, indeed. Oh, 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 he won it in 1906, me. and it was for his role in the Treaty of Portsmouth that ended the Russo-Japanese War. Very good. That, so, Well, that was the history round. And, Neil, bring us up to speed and tell us what the score is. Uh, so, for my records... Is Andy the only one that didn't take the easy mode on that one? That is correct. Okay. At the end of round four, Andy has 107, Kells 100, Devo 70, and Allison 53. All right. If we get an email from the University of Northern Colorado, no, they can't have their history degree back. I earned it then. <laughs> I've just gotten stupider as I got older. Again, Devo, you majored in D&D history. Is that medieval yes. stuff? Yeah, well, magic missile to your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to my gazentas, we have two categories left before the final. Let's okay. move on to sports. This, oh. question number one. This competition and the associated trophy is the oldest international sporting trophy given. Name it. Oh, I know this. We've done this one before. Locked in? I'm locked in. Good for you guys. <laughs> so it has to be American, right? Because of the category. And it's got to be an old sport, like golf or something like that. But... I don't I'm know any... In. Okay, I got a guess. I got a guess. <gasps> no, 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 I got a better guess. Alice, oh. you locked in? Well, yeah, my first answer was probably better, and they're probably both bad. All right. Andy, why don't you tell us the parenthetical? Well... I can't. There's a cup that's given in sailing, um, and I can't come up with the name of it. And so I went with the Stanley Cup. It's All the right. next oldest one I can think of. But I think there's a sailing one that's older. And Kels. I had Lord Stanley's Cup, but I'm not entirely sure that we can call it NHL in a an American league but i know it's oh it is now there they're getting rid of all the canadian teams yeah they are there it's not what? it's not right there there what what happened they're getting Seriously? rid of all the canadian teams there's like six left man 
Oh, oh man, I thought you were talking about <laughs> they were purging the Canadians. Purging the Canadians from our <laughs> here. We're getting ready Purge. to attack Canada. <laughs> uh, Kels, what, uh, or, yeah, Davo. Uh, I said the America's Cup for St. Louis. That's Allison. the one I was looking for. Wait, what was Davo's answer? The America's, America's Cup. Cup. That's what it okay, is. Okay, so I'm about to scream at the top of my lungs because I wrote down America's <laughs> Cup. And then I was like, that can't be a thing that I just made up in my head. So then I went with the President's Cup. Mm. And so your answer was America's Cup? No, President's that's Cup. what I started I wrote and then scribbled out. So it's President's Cup. We appreciate your honesty. The answer, keep in mind the category, America, it was indeed America's Cup. I literally, cup. I talked my way into that. I said the category is America it. I couldn't come and up it's with a cup. Name. Yes, it was. Question number two. Field of Dreams captured part of the Americana lore with the greatest game in, uh, around baseball. The Field of Dreams is real and was scheduled to host a major league game this summer until COVID-19. In what state would you find the Field of Dreams field? Locked in. Locked in. There is a bonus for two points each. Name the two teams in the movie. Ooh. I think I'm about mm. to get in trouble from everybody. In the movie. What if I've never seen the movie? Then you're in trouble. I'm locked in with the teams. Uh, it's okay. What if you can only come up with one movie? Only one. Yeah, I mean, not one movie, on one team. Yeah. You get two points. Okay. I'm locked in with teams, and I'm um, just going to say it now. I'm going to lightning bolt Andy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> and Allison. Um, oh dear. You start with the person who hasn't seen it? Okay. What? I said oh. Illinois because Andy locked in super fast. And then I said the Cubs and the White Sox. All right. Let's go to Davo. I said Iowa, and I said the White Sox and the Yankees for the teams. And no, Kels. Don't be Iowa. I said um, Iowa. I believe it's in Dubuque uh, County. Uh, and I have the White Sox, of course, and I didn't put a second team. All right. I should have put the Cubs. And Andy. Um, you know, she's partially correct because the – the town scenes with the doctor was shot in Galena, Illinois, but the Field of Dreams is in Iowa. Um, and the two teams, obviously the Black Sox, the Chicago White Sox. Um, but I'm a little bit confused because you could go two ways with the other team. In the introduction of the movie, he talks a lot about the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Dodgers moving away. But in the pivotal scene where he gets the, the clue to where to find the doctor, uh, he's at Fenway Park. He has to go to Boston. So you could say the Red Sox or you could say the Brooklyn Dodgers. Well, I almost fell asleep during your answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about the science category. Don't anybody forget Neil is here. <laughs> that was a beautiful chime in. And don't forget to shoot Andy in the face with lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer is it was indeed in Iowa, and Andy, you were correct. It was filmed in Illinois, part of it at least. Mm -hmm. And the teams, we will accept either the Dodgers, the Brooklyn Dodgers, or the uh, Boston because of, of uh, Ray and Mann attending a game there in Fenway. And the other team, of course, was the Chicago White Sox, known as the Black Sox. So two points for each of those two teams, but Andy, you only get both of those, not four. 
Andy gets none. Andy gets none. I got none. nothing because I got lightning struck. Well, question number three. Moses Fleetwood Walker is credited with being the first, having done so in 1884. Moses was the first what? Moses Fleetwood Walker? Is that yes. what his name was? Yes. Credited with being the first, officially the first, having done so in 1884. Locked in. Well, I mean, with that name, it has to be the first glam rock band. Oh, yeah. In 1851. Come on. I would buy tickets. <laughs> Have a guess. Ball. It does make me feel better that none of you are just like jumping right into this. No idea. I love My the name so much, though. 19th century name. sports knowledge is, is pretty thin. I'm locked in. Well, I feel good that we're going to educate you all if you get it wrong. You have been a fountain of education this this episode, this Barry. Oh. Uh, Moses Fleetwood Walker was the first in yes, 1881. 1884. Oh, Ironically, well, his different. brother was the second in 1885 or 86. Oh. All right. I wrote right, a thing down. I'm locked in. All right. Everybody locked in? Mm-hmm. All yes. right. Well, let's go to Andy first. Uh, the first surfer. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Allison. What did you say? I said the first left-handed pitcher. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Davo? I said the first Native American baseball player. And, and Kels? See, I was going to put, like, uh, some, like, hit for the cycle, but... The name Moses, I don't, I only know like African American athletes named Moses. And it didn't really sit right, but I wrote it anyway. I said, first black man to play in the majors. Well, the correct answer is Allison, in the segment you did on African Americans, you talked about him, but you never nice. mentioned him by name, but you did mention the Toledo Blue Stockings. That's who he played oh, for. And the yeah. correct answer, Kel's correct. He was the first black to play in the major leagues yes. in organized can, baseball. Can nice. I get can I get half points for writing down the words baseball player? <laughs> uh, well, we have to go to our official judge on that. Neil? Let me see. Are Native Americans and African Americans the same? Um, uh. No. No, I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying that, that I wrote the words baseball player. The correct answer was African-American baseball player. So half of that <laughs> literally is baseball player. All right. And a nugget to that is if you guys, if you guys, gals out there ever go to Kansas City, go to the Negro League Baseball Hall of Fame, and it's like 18th and Vine in Kansas City. It is fabulous. It is great. And – by the way, the major leagues recognizes him as the official first, not hmm. uh, Jackie Robinson. But if you ever go, it's hmm. you'll spend four hours there easy. It's terrific. I didn't know that's where that was. Yeah, it's, there. It is, it's right it is next to the cool. jazz, jazz Hall of Fame. It's it's fabulous. You know, so, for Neil to say it's pretty cool means it's going to be stupendously cool for someone who actually cares about baseball. <laughs> yeah, no, I was I was there for a company function, not for uh, not because I love baseball, but it was it was really neat. Yeah. Okay. Question number four in the sports category. What team did the U.S. hockey team defeat on February 24th, 1980 to win the Olympic gold medal? Locked in. Locked, Locked in. in. Wait, one more time, because I think what I know this one. What team did the U.S. hockey team defeat February 24th, 1980 to win the 1980 Olympic gold medal? Okay. I feel like I'm going to miss this on a technicality. Uh, everyone else is locked in, yes? Yes. Yes. This is what the movie Miracle is based off of, correct? Correct. 
-hmm. Okay. I think I think I have the right one written down. By the way, okay. because of that, you know we're going to go pick you first, right? No, no, no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Food on a stick. Okay. Allison. Well, I mean it's it's Russia, but at the time, oh God, come on, Cold War knowledge. I think I need to say USSR. Okay. Okay. And Kels. Allison, uh, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but they don't beat the Soviets in the gold medal game. Now, I don't have it right either because I wrote Sweden and I fear it might be like Norway. Okay. Dang it. And Andy. I'm in the same boat. The USSR was not the gold medal game. I was thinking it was Canada, uh, but and I don't remember for sure. Dave uh, It's Sweden. Oh. <gasps> Please be right. Shoot. When and how you sweep is a vital part of curling. <laughs> it is not Sweden. It is not to Norway. It is not to Russia. It is Finland. Finland. They beat them four to two. And they defeated the Russians to play in the finals. But they mm -hmm. beat the Finns to win the Olympic gold medal. And with that, Neil, bring us up to speed on that score sheet. See, let's, let me put in these zeros before I read the scores. Okay. <laughs> Got it. We're all up to date now. Kells has 122 points. Andy has oh. 107. Devo, 92. And Allison, 55. Oh. <laughs> I did not get a single one right in that category. Oh. Well, technically you did, but... Oh, yeah, that's right. Then if I got the lightning strike. That's <laughs> yeah, right. Struck. That's right. Because everybody keeps beating up on me, and then Kells wins. <laughs> yeah. Just like last time. Andy, you still have a lightning bolt. I know. That's okay. good. <laughs> All right. Well, the last category is hodgepodge, or as Alex Trebek would call it, potpourri. 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 Question number one. Love this question. Muscle cars are one of the hallmarks of Americana. In 1966, this muscle car sold 97,000 units or cars a muscle car record that stands today, and at 68, they sold another 88,000. A 1964 song about this car by Ronnie and the Daytonas peaked at number four in the Billboard charts. What is the model of this best-selling muscle car of all time? Now, Locked I'm in. going to give you straight up, it was not the Mustang. The original Mustang was considered a pony car, not a muscle car. What was the model of this best-selling muscle car i'm locked hmm. in because i know a song about a muscle car i feel like we had this question before i think it has been out here before because mm -hmm. there was like a big debate on from andy about what a muscle car is yeah um, and i learned from that then you guys should get it <laughs> you're so funny barry <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> Let's see if I'll ever get invited back again, huh? Barry, you asked a question that I wrote like a week ago, and I didn't know the answer. <laughs> so, you know. Actually, learn. I would not have gotten the muscle car thing unless he had the he added the Daytonas to it. Then I knew the song. I locked in. I'm locked in. In fact, I think if I participated or listened while you guys were playing, I think I said the same answer last time. And what would that be, Allison? Oh, me first? I guess, yes. Okay. We'll have fun, fun, fun. Till Daddy takes the T-Bird away. I said uh, T-Bird. And, <laughs> and Kels. I said a Charger. It's wrong. And Devo. I said she's real fine, my 409. And Andy. GTO, or GOAT. It is the 1966 Pontiac GTO. Ronnie and the Totonas. Uh, GOAT sang it. from GTO makes no sense. It would be the GOT. <laughs> uh, correct. It doesn't make sense, but that's what it is. It GTO. It would be the GOT. <laughs> so, from muscle cars, we're going to go to 
Native American tribes. According to the 2010 U.S. Census, what are the two largest Native American tribes in the U.S.? Five points for each correct Ooh. answer. Hey, I'm locked in. Locked in. Mm, good for you Five guys. Five points for each. Well, I'm, I was following your model there, Allison. I was like, first thing pop in my head. Boom. I'm locked in. I was like, wait, Chicken Kiev makes no sense. Let's back off. <laughs> <laughs> Go for something else. Okay, this is one of those where I'm going to, because I was born in Oklahoma, I'm going to forget all the northern tribes. Just So, sorry about that. I'm locked in. All right, everybody locked in? Let's start first with Kels. I have Cherokee and Lakota. Okay. And Devo. I have Cherokee and Navajo. Mm. Andy. I have Cherokee and Sioux. And Allison. Okay, I'm about to be really sad. I wrote down Cherokee and Sioux because I was trying to diversify. Which also makes me wonder about um, Kels' answer of Lakota. But then I crossed out Sioux and I said Creek. Okay. Mm. The correct answer, 819,000 members of the Cherokee tribe. And number okay. two is 287,000 identify as Navajo. Oh. So nice. Cherokee hey, and you know? Navajo. Uh -huh. nice. Arizona, baby. Question number three in Hodgepodge or Potpourri is Mount Rushmore is a famous part of Americana. Name the four presidents from left to right. Now, the scoring oh. here is a little complicated. Scoring one point for each president in, in any order, or in order, or excuse me, in any order, three points for each one in the correct order. So if you nail all four in order, you get 12 points. Four presidents. Left you said to like right. how we read from left to right? <laughs> uh, which That's, is my left? That's from well, our left to right, not the president's left to right. I'm locked in, by the way. I uh, I am going to be so ashamed to explain how I know this. <laughs> it would be more ashamed if you missed it. <laughs> oh, crap, True. man. Don't put pressure. Pressure. We're counting on you, Allison. I feel like uh, this, oh, I can't give this hint, but I was going to say one president has been a little heavy in this. I'm starting to think I know who your favorite president is, Barry. <laughs> Everybody's favorite president. I'm locked in. False. False. <laughs> All right, I'm locked in. Anybody not locked in? I also will be using my lightning strike against Kells. Mm. Well, this doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that one out the window. <laughs> All right. Well, seeing as we got uh, Kells there that's been uh, lightning struck, let's go first to Kells on this one. Uh, I don't think I have the order right. I have Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, and Teddy Roosevelt. All right, and Devo. All right, in order from left to right, I believe it's Washington, and then Teddy Roosevelt smooshed in there, and then Lincoln, and then Jefferson. And Andy. You guys are making this so hard because he did it purposely in chronological order. It's Washington, <laughs> exactly. Jefferson, TR, and Lincoln. Or no, you know, T R. You know, T R was mm -hmm. after Lincoln. Yeah, I just realized I got that mixed up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's how I wrote it down. So, there you go, Allison. No, but it's right, Andy. You're just Is wrong it right? about the Is chronological. Wrong? Okay, okay. Yeah, I think George <laughs> yeah. Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abe Lincoln. And the reason I know this is because in my household my husband will also often go what is your uh mount rushmore of scary movies which means i have to pick oh. four place them in order 
Um, Interesting. And one time I was like, baby, I've never seen Mount Rushmore. And then he had to explain to me who the presidents were on there. Okay. So there you go, guys. And I think that's the order. Uh, well, you are correct. It is. It was done, by the way, by Gutzen Borglund. It is, of course, by in, in South Dakota. And it is Washington, Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, and Lincoln. Oh, good. That is Dang the it. correct order. All right. One last question before the final one. Uh, and you might say, God bless America. Well, that is correct. It is an American patriotic song written in World War I uh, mm-hmm. and revised on the, in World War II, 1938. The later version was notably recorded by Kate Smith, which became her signature song. What famous composer composed it? God bless America. Locked in. I just read this. Yeah. Uh. Uh, I, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I just wrote gob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. So it's not Betsy Ross. <laughs> oh my god. What's happening anymore? Betsy Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, George Washington said they needed a song to rally the troops, and Betsy Ross wrote God Bless America. Everybody knows it. And she was only 194 when she wrote it. Right. Exactly. The eldest is Brian. Oh, are you like the I, I don't even have a... I'm about to write down freaking Betsy Ross because I don't even have a good guess. <laughs> okay. Well, with that in mind, let's go to Allison. Lightning Strike Andy first. Oh. Oh, okay. got him. Hey, thanks, Kels. <laughs> thanks for that. You were closest. Uh, all right. Uh, Allison. Well, said, in the words of Davo, God bless Bess. He rocks. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Well, let's see what Davo said. I said Copeland. And Kels. I said George Gershwin. And Andy. Wait a minute. Copeland from the P- the police? No. Really? A- a- no. <laughs> uh, it's Irving Berlin. And, and interestingly, he wrote it for an American-themed pageant, but then dropped it from the pageant because the other song was too over the top. That mm. is absolutely correct. Too bad now, you get no points. <laughs> no, no points. And four... <laughs> Before we go to the Don Pardo of Brain Ladle Trivia for the final score, you guys are going to owe me a beer when you guys go out to the bar and you just sweep these, you know, the, the, and you, you sweep everybody with your great knowledge of Americana. But let's go to the Don Pardo of Brain Ladle Trivia and Andy or and, and Neil, tell us what the score is. Uh, I, I was going to try to do a Don Pardo imitation, but I don't think I know what he sounds like really. <laughs> So I'm just going to skip that. Andy has 134, Kells 127, Devo 108, and Allison 72. And just imagine what Andy's score would have been without the lightning strike. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. You got all of those yeah. right, didn't yeah. you, Andy? Yeah. 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 He, would Thanks, have been, guys. he would have been like in the 165 range. I hate yeah. all of you now. Good job, well, team. <laughs> yeah. You're going to love this question then. Um, all right. If you're ready for the final question, here we go. Mm-hmm. There are 11 movies with the word America or American in the title that have grossed more than $200 million. Jeez. Name 10 of them for 10 points each. I just got to get three to, to break 100. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait just one second, Bobble. Yes, it's your friendly podcasting fanatic. Here to shout out my trivia brothers from another mother, the Trivia Rogues. When you get a chance, pop on over to the Trivia Rogues and let Billy and the gang educate you on some things, Bubba. Funk on. And do remember to please look both ways before you cross my mind, baby. 
<laughs> Who wants to go first? I'd like to go first. All right. Unless Allison would like to go first. Oh, Kels, it'll be much better if you go first. The <laughs> listeners might turn it off if I'm going first. Okay. Okay. Let's. I have American Sniper. Okay. Captain America, First Avenger. Okay. Captain America, Winter Soldier. Dude. Captain America, Civil War. Yep. An American in Paris. I really ran out of steam after those four. <laughs> uh, the American. Uh, the Quiet American. The what? American President. American All the American Be- President. Uh, American Beauty. And American Gangster. Oh. Dang All it. Right. Who wants to go second? I will. Okay. Andy. Um, I also got the Captain America movies. Captain America Civil War. Captain America Winter Soldier. Captain America First Avenger. Uh, An American Story. I think that's a movie. Um, American Sniper. Uh, An American Paris. I I heard you got that one too. And that was one I was like, I'm not sure if that's an old song or a movie. Uh, (laughs) I know this probably didn't gross this much money, but the greatest American hero should have. And my last show. one is, I know, <laughs> walking on air, look at me now. Uh, and American Beauty is the last one I have down. All right. And Davo. Uh, American Beauty, Team America World Police. <laughs> yeah. I knew somebody would have it. I knew somebody would. <laughs> the American President, uh, American Gigolo. The Captain America movies that were mentioned previously. Uh, American in Paris. American Graffiti. Oh! Uh, Coming to America. Oh, my God. I don't know if if that wants that much, though. I am, too. That's what I got. I'm really hoping it's not, and I want that movie to be as successful as possible. It should be on the list. But I'm hoping it's not there. Eddie Murphy at the height of his power. Two hundred million is not that much, man. I'll betcha. Yeah. Oh. That hurts. It was a lot when that movie came out. It was. It hurts. And I had one is it me? for number eleven. I had American Tail. Ooh, oh, five. the most yeah, the most movie yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay. There's a pair of bare breasts oh. in that movie. What? Was in a, a window somewhere, right? In a window. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I was thinking about the rescuers, but it's all rats. All right. You guys ready for th- Let's do it. Number one, American Sniper. Then we got American Psycho. Then it pretty oh. much goes downhill from there. <laughs> uh, I said American Pie 1, American Pie 2. You can't forget Wet Hot American Summer. Mm, Because that is one of my favorite movies. American Idiot, which I'm pretty sure is just a Green Day song. It's a musical, but not a movie. Okay. American Beauty. That was a surefire guess. Like, I just felt like American Beauty was a phrase. American Gothic. I believe that's a painting. Very famous painting. <laughs> yeah, it's a famous painting. American Girl. I didn't add doll, but I thought about it. <laughs> and then the last one I just wrote, American Man. <laughs> <laughs> American Girl is a Tom Petty song. American Girl. <laughs> All right. American well, we Band have... you could have gone with. Coming to your town will help you party down. All right. So coming in... At number 11, actually, and I'm going to, there is one that I added to this list, so there's actually 12, but you get it. At the bottom of the list is at 200 million exactly, was American Graffiti. Not crap. Nice. American Graffiti, number 10 on that list, and there's one that's tied, so it's actually number 11. American Wedding at 233. That did well. And number nine Ooh. tied with another. And it is American Pie 2 Get and, <laughs> and Coming to America. Yes! Oh, hey. my goodness. Number Burns eight. Number eight, American Pie at 200 
And wow, Alice is Crushing killing it, it right now. <laughs> it goes down from there. <laughs> yeah. American Hustle. Oh, um, I forgot about that. Yep. All right, American Gangster. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Denzel off the list. American yeah. Beauty. Yeah. Okay. Captain America: First Avenger. Oh, God. Captain go. America: The Winter Soldier. Got yeah. it. And tied, sort of at number one, just within hair of each other, American Sniper, and Captain America: Civil, Civil War. War. Got it. American right. in Paris, by the way, and realizing it was made in 1951, but only made about seven million. Even if you adjusted it for inflation, you went go over 200. Okay. Wow. But two, three, four. I got five. I did it, boys. Over a hundred. And that's only because you saw American Pie several times and learned about the other. <laughs> Your love of trash yeah, movies saved you. Gotcha. I am appalled that Wet Hot American Summer was not on the list. I know. What's the world coming to? There's not a box it. office, right? No. <laughs> no, 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 Davo. The original is not on Netflix. I thought the it was a Netflix remake. Uh-uh. It oh. was... It's too old for that. Okay. The wettest, hottest American summer, I believe, is the follow-up. <laughs> and that is on Netflix. Hottest, Allison, wettest. we all want to know why you know this stuff. Oh, <laughs> because I only spend my time watching trash. Yeah. Okay. Well, If it's we not go. below, like, 45 on Rotten Tomatoes, I don't feel a need to watch it. Got it. <laughs> So or why we can't have nice things. <laughs> Before I do the scores, by my count, Allison got four, Andy five, and Dave and Kells both got six. Yeah, I got five. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what would the score be there, Mr. Pardo? Well, starting at the bottom with 72, adding four for her four, or 40 for her four correct answers, Allison ended up at 112. Uh, let's see, third place going into the final was Devo with 108. Uh, he got six right, bringing him to a total of 168. Kells had 127 and got six correct, bringing him to 187. And Andy started the final round with 134, got five correct, ended up at 184. Kells oh. wins by three points. Oh, no. Well, tell them what they've won. <laughs> I mean, not really that much. <laughs> Andy, if only you have you won had been shot in my the face. guarantee of vengeance on all of you, <laughs> <laughs> all of you will pay. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. Well, you knew the second the category was Americana, we were going to pick the old fart train enthusiast to shoot, right? <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> I want to point out for the second time in a row, I could have won if it wasn't for the ganging up on it. Yeah. If it weren't for those pesky kids. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> uh, Literally. Well, tournament wise, after game two, Allison's got two points. Andy and Devo both have five. And Kells has eight. Well, good job there, Kells, and everyone else. And thank you very much for allowing me to uh, participate in the. Uh, in the tournament as your host. So. It was our pleasure. We had a good time. Great, great questions, Barry. Wonderful well, questions. Well, thank you. So I do, I do have something I just want to say to the listening audience there. And I'm not saying this because I'm a host or because I've been a guest, but I have a challenge for all those Brain Ladle trivia fans out there. Share the podcast with two friends this week, maybe, maybe an enemy, but go on and rate them on <laughs> Apple, Facebook, and Pod uh, app. I, I've listened to every single trivia podcast show that's available. My personal belief is this is the most entertaining and the best quiz-based trivia podcast that's out there. And even if you remotely agree or if you're not a Patreon member, I urge you to go support the show. Help them out and help them get on the top of the list. So that's my plug just because I, I think it's a great show. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Thanks, Barry. Barry's the best. I have nothing more to add other than... From all of us here at the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast, this is Devo with Andy. You know, after the ganging up, I can tell you, um, I do have a very particular set of skills. 
skills I've acquired over a very long career. <laughs> skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. So long, ladle brainers. <laughs> Kells. Because I left it off my list. Um, when you think of garbage, think of a key. <laughs> <laughs> Allison. Fellas, I'm going to break through this glass ceiling one day just as soon as I get up off the floor. <laughs> Barry. Well, I have two quotes about America. So Marilyn Von S- or Vos Sant, whatever her name is, was the world's highest IQ at age 10, and according to Guinness Records, the world record holder for a current highest IQ. She said, what is the essence of America? It's finding and maintaining that perfect, delicate balance between freedom to and freedom from. But if we go to the great philosopher Ringo Starr, when asked about his trip to America for the first time, they said, so how did you find America? And he answered, I turned left at Greenland. (laughs) (laughs) And Neil. Uh, Barry's fellow Minnesota and Garrison Keillor once said, I think the most un-American thing you can say is, you can't say that. Oh yeah! Like what you hear, yeah. You should listen to the show on your favorite podcast app, yeah. Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, yeah. You want to talk to us? You can tweet us at Ladle Brain, yeah. Also, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube. We're Brain Ladle Productions. Yeah, don't you miss it. Yeah, we also have individual website and emails, brainladletrivia.com. You can find Neil, you can find Kills, Dave, and Andy. Yeah, if you want to donate to the madness, we have a Patreon. We hope to see you again soon. Go down that lonesome highway. Yeah. Dig it! The preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions. All rights reserved.